we have this divine nature that we, a lot of the time, aren't really even in touch with. But our value is so great. Let me tell you something. Here's what I believe. I believe that you could take the most filthy, abjectly dirty, smelly, sick person. And if you really, truly could see with spiritual eyes who that person is and the value of that person in eternity, you'd fall to your knees in awe. And that's how it is with every single one of us. That's the value that we all have. It's really incomprehensible to us because we're so blocked. You know, we're dialed back, so we're just shy of stupid. How many of you know somebody that you think might have been dialed back a little too far? Oh, no. What happened to that one? Well, I held my button on the, my finger on the button a little too long for him. But we lose sight of who we are, see, due to these imbalances, right? We lose sight. Those imbalances interfere with our ability to sense who we really are and to discover who we're supposed to be. Well, guess what? Um, who we are not supposed to be, really, um, is our ego, because the ego is the lower part of us, the lower part of ourself. And the ego wants to create you know, a false identity for us. The ego is constantly seeking approval, right? Um, and the ego wants to desperately avoid pain. And so the ego also judges. The ego part of us com- is constantly comparing us to other people. And it's the ego part of us that's telling us that we're not as good as we should be, etc. Because we need to be special. We need to be superior to other people. Not realizing that we already are special, see, and that everybody is special, but we're all different. The ego part of us tends to be the part that feels inferiority, right? Doesn't feel as good as we should be. And the ego part of us is the part of us that feels really hurt when our pride is injured, right? Or if you've ever experienced that, yeah, right? So the ego creates limitations for us, too. If your subconscious mind or, you know, if you've ever said this to yourself, you you know, you can't do this, that's actually your ego, all right? The ego is the part of you that wants to take credit, right, for something good that you did because it's so insecure, really. The ego is really insecure. And so, like I said yesterday, you know, if somebody comes to you with tears in their eyes and they thank you for helping them with this work, the ego part of you wants to say, oh, yes, I'm so great, aren't I? That's the ego. You need to let that go and give the power and the credit, really, you know, give the credit where the credit is due, really, is to that higher power, whatever you believe. The ego creates resistance. I love these pictures. They're all just so great. (laughs) There's your ego right there. The ego resists change. It doesn't want to change. It prevents connection with other people. Uh, It prevents... And interferes with your ability to forgive. Think about that one. Wow, that's powerful, isn't it? Is there somebody in your life that you have, you know, really had a hard time forgiving? Could it be you, right? Could it be you yourself? Maybe it's someone else. It's the ego that says, you know what? If I refuse forgiveness to him or her, it's going to hurt them. Does it? No. They don't even know. It's only hurting who? Just hurting you. There's a, there's a, a book um, called The Emotion Code. <laughs> and uh, in the book, I quote actually a guy named Lewis Smeads who said, um, forgiveness is setting the prisoner free only to find out that the prisoner was you, right? But the ego part of you will prevent forgiveness, see? It'll try to interfere with that. The ego needs control, and it, it will tend to resist that higher self your divine self, the ego, will tend to resist that. So you need to try to seek balance in your life and try to be aware and recognize when your ego is getting in the way, okay? Um, if you got too much negativity going on in your life, that comes from your ego. Yes? Oh, yeah. So what she just said was in the 12-step program, ego stands for edging God out. I like that. That's really good. Because ego will also create what we, what we often refer to as pride or resistance, right? You can think of pride as re- resistance. There's two kinds of pride. There's the pride, you know, pr- 
pride in your team or pride in your unit or whatever, and that's fine. But then there's another kind of pride, and that's resistance. And that's resistance to other people. Some people are in a state of resistance to everybody. But especially, that's true, edging God out when you're in a state of resistance to what the universe, the higher power, God, grace, would intend for you and your life. And if you're in a, if you're in a state of resistance to that uh, power, that's really stupid, huh? Well, remember, you got scaled way back. <laughs> And maybe you're just teetering on the edge of complete idiocy. (laughs) It happens. So if your thoughts tend to be really self-focused, like it's all about me, 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 right? That's the ego. If your thoughts, you know, you want to move those thoughts outward. How can I help other people and be of service to them? And then that's expansion, right? Remember that you are not your imbalances. You're not your baggage, okay? But... Um, those things can certainly interfere. And a lot of the time, it's things like worthlessness, unworthiness, and guilt, and undeserving. and Those are things that tend to come from the ego. So you can, you can change things, and you can shift. And the identity of who you have become sometimes needs to be let go. And one of the beautiful things about the emotion code and, and releasing the emotional bag is, is that at a certain point, it's like, Stepping out of this old suit that you've been walking around in all your life, or stepping out of this old skin you've been wearing, and you step out of that into a new state of being that is much closer to who the universe really intends for you to be, right? And then you start to be able to manifest. I mean, imagine living in a world where everybody's really manifesting from their heart that perfect blueprint that is inside of them, right? Imagine. It's different for everybody, you know? For me, the manifestation of my heart is to be here teaching you, right? And to do what I'm supposed to be doing. But for you, it's different. For all of us, it's different. But imagine the, imagine the uh, gosh, the, the synchronicity. And imagine a world where everyone is actually free of their emotional baggage and living from their heart. That is where we're going. We are going to that place. Is it going to be a struggle to get there? Yeah, probably. But whatever, man. What isn't a struggle? <laughs> 